Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am creating this fun slimline pool tab birthday card. So the hot air balloon goes up and down in my scene, which I just think is really, really cute. So the products that I'm using are all Happy Doodle products today. Um, I started with the hot air balloon dies, obviously. And then I have the um, Wahoo shadow die. I have the Slimline Pull Tab dies and the Popping By stamp set for the little mouse and the Highland Honeys stamp set for my scene building elements, the trees and the mountains. And I was going to use this Wave To Me stencil, but in the end I kind of forgot about it um, and yeah, just used my um, cloudy stencil from Lawn Fawn instead, but I will like, I'd like to use that um, stencil for a, a sky one day. So here we go. I die cut all of my balloon pieces off camera uh, just to save a little bit of time because this is quite a long video anyway, and I'm just assembling it. So um, you basically cut two of the balloon shapes and then from one of the colors or you can just have a plain balloon but I decided to give mine stripes and so from one of the um, balloon pieces you cut these two kind of side pieces. Now I uh, made my balloon a little bit skew off today it's not centered my two um, side pieces aren't the same size and um, I probably should have taken a bit more time and care to get that right and then when I put the um, little circle piece on I glued it in the wrong place and it just looked really skew off. <laughs> But it, I, I think it works. It's okay. Um, I will know for next time to take a bit more time and care about where I'm placing everything. But it, um, I think it's kind of cute anyway. I'm, I'm not too bothered about it. Like I said, it's my first time using these dies. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of going with it. <laughs> I'm using the little glue bit, which is Heffy Doodle's um, glue. And I decided to use that today. Um, I did get a little bit of a bit messy and I think I, I don't think it would matter what glue you used I think it would be quite messy anyway um, next time I might try some tape runner just to see if it helps um, yeah the glue kind of went everywhere and some of these pieces are very very tiny so um, it was quite hard to to get the glue on but I wanted to use something really strong and um, because obviously this is going to be the slider element of my card so I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. And um, so I just thought liquid glue would be the best for that. And actually it turns out absolutely fine. Luckily, I mean, the glue dries clear so you can't see it. Um, but yeah, I, I, my fingers were getting very, very sticky while I was doing this. So I love all the elements with this die. I just think it's really, really cute and very detailed. So it's got the little basket and then it's got this little kind of rope piece, which I die cut from yellow. And um, you can hang little sandbags from this little rope piece, which I just thought was very, very cute and a great attention to detail. And the little sandbags have some really lovely um, little detail on them as well. Some um, looks like kind of like they're gathered at the top, which I thought was really, really cute. So I die cut those from some lighter colored um, craft cardstock just to add a little bit of contrast. Now you could definitely, definitely ink blend some color onto these elements as well. Um, because it was my first time using them today, I just wanted to go quite simple and uh, just concentrate on trying to make sure that I could put it together correctly. So that's what I did. Um, I didn't bother with any ink blending, but you could definitely add some ink blending and it would look super, super cute. Um, I think it would really kind of bring it to life. and. Um, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it's adorable anyway, regardless. So um, I was really, really happy with how it turned out. The other thing is it's got this great bunting, which you can attach to the balloon. So I did that. I cut the kind of base part from that craft cardstock. And then I cut my little, um, my, my kind of pennants um, from yellow and purple cardstock. I decided to go with really bright kind of fun colors today um, to make a really bright happy birthday card hopefully <laughs> that was the idea so I've gone for very very bright colors so the yellow is the same as the yellow that I used on the kind of um, rope for my um, sandbags and then I'm going to use the purple in the background um, 
as well so that it kind of ties across. But yeah, just some little pops of really bright colour along with that obviously very bright pink that I've used for the balloon. So um, these just kind of fit in. Um, so there's one with kind of four pennants on it, which goes in the middle. And then there's a die that cuts just two pennants, which go on either side. And it looks really, really lovely. Again, I didn't kind of take my time and, and uh, place this carefully down on my um, hot air balloon. I think I will be much more careful next time. I was just kind of really worried about how everything went together. <laughs> so... I didn't concentrate so much on the placement of things, which I probably should have. Um, but it just it, it looks really, really cute anyway. I don't think you could make too much um too many errors with this. I think whatever you did it would it would turn out really, really cute. So um yeah, the little the two smaller ones go on either side and the bigger one goes in the middle. And then I got the tip for making the um the to kind of finishing off the balloon from the Heffy Doodle website because they have these very, very, you can just see them on the desk, they're very, very fine um, pieces which I've cut from grey cardstock which are meant to be the um, join between the basket and the balloon. But obviously these are very, very thin and to make them sturdier, I've cut a piece of acetate which you can see there. So I'm gonna use that to pop behind those, um, behind both the basket and those two kind of um, stem parts. I don't really know what to call that. What, I don't know the technical name, <laughs> if there is a technical name. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just kind of popping them on either side of the basket. And then I'm gonna put my um, acetate over top and kind of give them something to stick onto um, that's a little bit more secure. And then I'm gonna attach the acetate to the top of the balloon as well. And this just makes the whole thing much sturdier particularly because I'm going to be using it as a slider. So I need everything to kind of stay together and hold together nicely. And this worked an absolute treat. So um, like I say, I'm just kind of messing around with that. And there's a lot of messing around to get everything in the right spots and obviously try and clean up some of the glue. I'm not too bothered about the glue on the acetate because my little mouse is going to cover most of it anyway. So um, like I say, it was a bit messy, but... Um, yeah, most of it gets hidden. Most of the kind of really obvious uh, bits get hidden. And I just wanted to make sure that everything was assembled and held together really nicely, which it did in the end. And I was very, very impressed with this die. Um, I'm very impressed with all of the Happy Doodle products that I've gotten um, recently. Everything is really high quality. Um, the dies cut out like a dream. I've got a very old die cutting machine. I think I've told everybody this before. And a lot of the times I have to run things through several times or add a bit of a um, shim to make sure everything gets cut out. But for these, I just ran them through once and it was perfect. So here we go, I've taken the stitched Slimline Trios die and I've taken the kind of middle um, stitched Slimline die from that and I've masked off all the stitching details around the edges and then just masked off a little bit at the bottom and I'm going in with some Lucky Clover Distress Ink and I'm just going to blend this on so it's nice and bright. I really like this green, it's a really nice bright um, kind of a, almost a bluish green but it's really really lovely. Once that's done, I'm going to move that mask down and then take out the cloudy stencil. This is where I was meant to use that waved me stencil and I've forgotten about it. And I'm going to use some Salty Ocean Distress Ink. And again, this is a really nice bright blue. And I'm just going to ink blend some clouds onto my sky. And um, just layering and moving my stencil around as I go up the panel so that I get a nice kind of... Um, yeah, look, nice look with lots of different shaped clouds as you go up. And I really love these two colours together and I just think they turned out really, really nice, really bright and colourful and lots and lots of fun, which is kind of what I was going for. So once I get to the top, I'm just going to go back into the bottom. I don't want that completely stark white, so I'm just picking up some of the colour that's left on the stencil and just blending that into the bottom so that it's not completely white. And then I'm going to just splatter on some of that colour. I'm not going to go in with any white. I'm just going to go in with this um, salty ocean and just splatter that all over 
my panel just to add some texture and some interest to everything. And I was really happy with how this turned out, nice and bright and colorful. As I say, that, that's kind of the look I was going for. So once I'd finished with my splatters, it was time for the fun part, which is doing the reveal and peeling off all of the tape. And I'm not too bothered about that kind of join between the land and sky because that's gonna be covered up by my uh, mountain range, which I'm going to stamp out here. So you can see I've already stamped my images out onto Transitype Perfect Coloring Paper using my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I'm gonna start with my little mouse and I'm using some E50 shades. So E55, E53, E51 and E50 to color the sky in. And um, isn't he just adorable? I love these um, kind of peeking images, which I <laughs> really, really fell in love with and was, yeah, I think I said in my last video, my haul video, that it kind of started my journey down the heffy doodle rabbit hole. Um, I'd seen quite a few cards used making these little guys. There's, um, in this stamp set that I got this mouse from, there's a little mouse and a fox. And then there's some um, boxes and balloons like and a cake um, and they can kind of appear like, look, appear like they're popping out of those images. And I just thought that was so, so sweet. And I've seen some really, really lovely um, examples of cards using these images. So that's kind of what made me fall in love with Heavy Doodle. And then when I went on the website to have a look, um, I discovered a whole load of more <laughs> stuff that I really, really wanted and couldn't resist. So um, I went ahead and bought and I'm so happy I did because as I say, I've been very, very impressed. The quality is amazing. The images are so cute and gorgeous and everything's just lots and lots of fun. So here we go with his little nose. I'm using my W markers, so W8 and W6, I believe, or W7 and W5. Um, I will put everything down in the description box below, everything that I've used. So if um, I get anything wrong, just check there to see exactly what I've used. I'll have it all listed. I'm using some R22 and R20 for his little ears and to add some little cheeks. And then it's on to my mountain range. So for my mountain range, I'm using my W markers, W7, W5, W3 and W1. And I'm just kind of creating shadow all the way around the edge of the mountains and then blending out towards the middle so that they kind of, yeah, just look a little bit rounded, I suppose. I don't really know. <laughs> that was just the kind of look I was going for. So my darkest muck around the edges and then into lighter in the middle. And I did realize as I was coloring these that my W1 and W3 markers are very, very dry and I really need to top them up. Um, yeah, I tend to use lighter colors the most and I found that also with my E50 markers that my lightest E50 markers are starting to get quite dry. So I really need to start topping up. I haven't got any of the Copic refills yet. Um, there is a shop here in Abu Dhabi where I can get them. So I might have to make a trip to go and source some of those so that I can start topping up my markers again. Um, isn't it horrible when you start to run out of ink <laughs> in the middle of a project? Uh, thankfully, I think I had enough to complete this. I did go in twice just to try and smooth out the blend so it's not quite so stark. Um, and thank yeah, thankfully I had enough ink in my markers to do that. Um, but I definitely, definitely need to look into topping them up. I'm a bit nervous about doing it, if I'm completely honest. I'm going to have to do it, go and find some YouTube videos to watch so that I can figure out what I'm supposed to do. Um, yeah, I think I don't want to overfill them or um, yeah, mess them up. So I'm going to have to do some research. Um, I'm going to see what I can find. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can find the Copic refills in a shop um, locally here so I can grab some sooner rather than later. So I'm just finishing these off now and just going in with my lightest marker, which is the W1, just to finish blending all of that out and making it quite smooth or as smooth as possible. 
Then I'm going to go into the tops of my mountains, for which I'm going to use some BG markers, so BG11 and BG10. And I'm just literally going around the bottom with the darkest marker and then blending out with the lightest. I'm not colouring in the entire thing, I'm just um, doing a little bit at the bottom. And then I will bring in my colourless blender, my zero marker just to kind of blend, fade that out to the white so it's not quite so stark. Um, but yeah, just to make it look a little bit like snow-capped mountains. So once the mountains were done, all that was left was the trees. So I used G28, G24 and G21 for my trees and I'm just kind of making them look like pine trees, I guess, or fir trees, I suppose. Um, <laughs> at least trying to make them look like that. I'm not sure they turned out perfectly. So I'm just going in with my darkest marker at the top and then kind of laying in a shadow at each kind of step of the tree, if that makes sense. Um, and then blending out towards the bottom of each part with the lighter marker, lighter two markers. And I think it just gives it a little bit of texture um, and hopefully <laughs> makes it look somewhat like a pine tree or a fir tree um <laughs> like i say and i say every single time i'm no expert when it comes to coloring most of what i learn or in fact everything of what i learn comes from watching other people on youtube it really is amazing to be able to see everybody um creating such wonderful stuff on youtube and and to learn so much from it so that's where i get all of my coloring tips and techniques from is from watching other people so I am going in with two coats and um, then I decided that doing each tree individually took a long time so I might as well just do uh, all of them at once <laughs> which is what I'm doing here but I did give them two coats to try and um, make it nice and even and blend it out and so I've done the two coats on those first two trees and now I'm just finishing off the first coat on the other four and then I'll go back in with my um, second coat. I didn't use all of the trees, I actually used five of them. Um, I just think odd numbers look better on a card, but because I was stamping them out in pairs, it was just easier to stamp them out. Um, so I had three of each, so <laughs> that's what I did. Um, but I just think this mountain range and these, these little um, trees work so perfectly with this um, hot air balloon seen because they kind of look small enough that um it looks like the mouse is quite high up and looking down and I just thought that worked really really well so I was very very happy with how this turned out in the end had a few teething problems as I say of putting the balloon together but all in all I think it was okay so onto the little tree trunks which are very very tiny I'm just using e47 and e44 just laying in a little bit of shadow to one side and then blending out with my lighter marker and as I say it's a very very tiny tiny area so um yeah and excuse that noise that's a plane going overhead <laughs> sounds like a I don't know what it sounds like a like a volcano rumbling or something so just adding some gel detail with my white secure jelly roll pen just adding some highlights um just to make everything kind of pop and stand out and then off camera, I did go ahead and fussy cut all my images. Uh, I don't have the coordinating dies, so I fussy cut everything out and there you can see everything is ready to go. Okay, so off camera, I did a little bit of die cutting and prepping everything so that it was ready. So with the slimline pull tab dies, I took the middle kind of track piece and die cut that as well as the kind of pull tab bit where the where the pull tab goes um, I took this sentiment set which is the wild at heart sentiments and I stamped the it's your birthday at the bottom and I die cut the wahoo from the shadow wahoo die cut um, I didn't want the shadow I just wanted the wahoo so I um, was careful to line everything up when I did it so it was all nice and centered and now it's just a case of kind of assembling everything. So I'm going to glue my little mouse on. Again, I'm just using my little glue bert from um, Happy Doodle to do that. So gluing him on to my little basket so that his little nose and paws are hanging off the edge of the basket. 
And then once he was done, it was time to try and assemble everything else. So I'm gluing my mountain range, as I say, just above the kind of join where it goes from grass to sky. And I did off camera cut the edges off my mountain range so that it fit in. I wanted it inside that kind of stitching detail so that I keep that nice white stitching detail all around. And then I'm going to glue down my woohoo just above my sentence so it's right at the bottom and I decided to use my tape runner for this um, just to kind of make things a little bit easier. So I'm just adding a little bit of tape all over that and I'm going to glue that down to the bottom just above my sentiment which says it's your birthday. And once that was done it was time to kind of assemble the actual pull tab. Um, so what I did was I had already cut everything out off camera and I took the, um, the kind of pull tab mechanism piece which has a couple of score lines on it. So um, you kind of fold it in and then out again so you get a bit of a Z fold and do that to both sides. And then you wanna thread those little bits up through the pull tab channel inside in the kind of center of the card. Um, so I spent a little bit of time making sure that those were nicely kind of burnished and, and uh, easily moved around. And then um, there's a little circle piece which cuts out and that just attaches to the top of those little pieces there. And I actually really like this idea because it made it very secure and very smooth. Um, and I, th I thought that was quite a neat little nifty trick. So it's not working particularly well. So what I do is I grab some powder tool and just um, kind of coat the edges of the pull tab part and it works a lot better. And it's just a case of playing with it a little bit. So pulling it up and down and then it will work a lot more smoothly. Um, so there we go. Also, I haven't yet attached the kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, the brace <laughs> to the back, which is what I'm doing here. So this is a little piece that comes with the die and you simply attach it around the kind of pull tab. So it gives it a little bit more security. So what I did was I tried to line it all up nice and centered. And then I just popped that little brace around the pull tab, just below the kind of opening for the pull tab so that it's nice and secure at the top there. And once that was done, um, it was holding together a little bit more. So I was playing with it and it's moving really, really nicely, which I was very happy with. So you can see I'm going to just pop my balloon and I was a little bit worried about it only being a very tiny piece um, of a, a, only a tiny place to attach the balloon to. Um, but I think it was it's fine. Um, my balloon was all nice and secure. I attached it um, and it's working great. So happy with that. Trimmed off the excess of the tab just played around with it a little bit more, make sure it's working and moving nicely, which it is. And then I took my little trees and decided where to put them. So I'm just um, kind of spacing them out in various areas. I was a little bit worried that my balloon might catch on my treetops or my mountain tops as it was moving kind of downwards again. Um, but it's not, it's absolutely fine. Um, it's working really, really lovely actually. So it, it all came together really nicely and I was really happy with how it turned out. And I've got to say that the um, slider mechanism was very, very easy to put together. It was super simple and um, I was very, very impressed. And I should say here that the inspiration for this card came from Lauren Taylor, who is on the Heffy Doodle um, design team. And she created a really fun um, slider card using exactly this um, balloon, hot air balloon die and the slider dies that I'm using. And I really fell in love with it. And um, I was really inspired to create this card today. So thank you, Lauren, for sharing your amazing video. Um, so here I'm just finishing off by pop popping this kind of um, extra piece that comes with the die set to kind of show the recipient what to do. And I die cut that from the same pink that I die cut from the balloon. And then I die cut it again and just took the little arrow from the same kind of turquoise that I used in the balloon so that everything kind of coordinates, hopefully. 
Um, and there we go, it's working beautifully and I was so happy with it. So now all that's left is to attach it to a card base. So I'm using some foam tape to do that, just to give it a little bit of lift so it's not um, attached directly to the card base. And um, just using a few bits around, obviously not uh, directly up to the pull tab because you want that to be able to move freely, but just around it. And then I'm going to um, attach it onto this purple piece which I cut from the slim line, sl slim line pull tab set. Um, and I'm gonna use that as my kind of background piece. And so I decided to try and get my grid mat out so that I could line it up and it, in the end I didn't really use it. Um, I kind of stuck it down and it was, it was quite tricky to get it in the right spot because it's so long. And I'm not sure I lined it up 100%, but I got kind of close. <laughs> so we'll live with it. Um, yeah, and I just think it turned out really, really cute. So sliding it up and down again a few times, making sure it's all working, which it is, and I'm very happy. So then I took a card base. This is three inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And I'm just going to, I kind of wanted it so that it wasn't um, visible behind the purple. I wanted the purple to be kind of what you could see. And I did stamp inside, um, I sent, stamped a little sentiment which says, let's celebrate, and that comes from the popping by stamp set. And then I stamped the little mouse as well, so that he's peeking over the sentiment. And just attached that with some glue bat again, some glue bat glue. And that's it, card finished. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up please think about subscribing to my channel and please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you thought. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.